Well, happy birthday season, Cancer. How about a little advice from your metal dog here today? Oh, this card wanted to jump out. Let's see. Oh, a couple cards. Uh, maker 4, a little control. But then a new beginning. The Dancer, Ace of Cups. Whoa. Okay. The Greedy Tree. All right, we'll put these back in, but... So if you have a little control coming up, maybe a new emotional beginning. We will see. Let me finish shuffling here. Usually the same energies will come into the reading anyway, but let's see. The greedy tree. Gosh, I never really think about how you cancers are about money. I don't think about money very much. <laughs> it's a duel. Um, I need it to eat. Let's see, what's going on for Cancer here? Maker Queen, Gift of Healing, Queen of Earth, Queen of Pentacles. She knows her worth. Very earthy, abundant feeling. But we just had the Earth, earthy Capricorn full moon. Um, it's actually right out there right now. If I have time today, I will do a full moon reading. But yeah, so we see, it looks like you are... Pouring emotions out onto the land, watering the fields here. That seems like a mix of that cancer energy, very nurturing, um, stereotypically. And in my experience of the cancers, let's see, underlying that. Ooh, a nine of cups, dancer nine, wish fulfillment. This looks quite dreamy. Beautiful. Love. Lots of love in her imagination, right? I see you reaching out. There's always so much nostalgia in you Cancerians. So this could be a dream of the future, a dream of the past. That's beautiful, though. This is really beautiful energy. And then Maker 10. Hmm, the Ten of Pentacles. Kingdom prospers. I have um, an immediate negative feeling towards this guy. I don't know. I'm sorry. Don't mean to be prejudiced. But I just see the fairy. I guess it's, you know, the um, Ten of Pentacles is always a family scene. It's about career abundance, earthy abundance, too. I like to think of it as being about earth. We have the Maker Queen and then we have Maker Ten. So this is. Queen of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles. There seems to be great abundance and prosperity in your cards here. I don't know why I'm not loving this cute fairy king in his tights. Or they kind of make me think of cowboy boots. Um, he's wearing, he's like a young Santa Claus. <laughs> he needs to grow a longer beard. Then he's got the... Fairy companion here with the red hair. All right. Um, and that's it on the bottom of this overarching deck. So Cancer. There is abundance. It's very earthy. It's very watery, emotionally fulfilling. You are just like pouring out your heart onto the land. It's feeding the land. It's cultivating abundance. There's some kind of family feeling, community Um I don't know why I don't like this. There's also people bringing gifts to you. I mean, this is like your birthday. You're this guy. You're Santa Claus on the throne with the hot fairy. <laughs> I don't know why. I just get this. It's, in, it's just an intuitive feeling of hmm, and suspicion. It's my feminist prejudice, maybe. <laughs> um People are bringing them gifts. There's a feeling of hierarchy. I always struggle a little bit with the uh, pentacles. And as I was saying when we came in here with the money stuff, um, which I don't remember why I was saying that. Well, because you got a four of pentacles. So there's a, some kind of um, feeling of greed um, around you, of financial limitation that causes control. Um, and so then I was just saying that and maybe it's part of this, the reason I was telling you that boring information, like 
there's something about my discomfort with capitalism that is a part of this reading. It's a, it's, um, it's very much in contrast to this sovereign being pouring out her feelings onto the land. The sun here is referring to the sun card, the happiest card in the tarot, authenticity. Then we have like this dreamy nine of cups, rainbow, dancer, nine energy. And then I just get like, what this, this isn't on another day. This is going to be heaven today. Let's look deeper. Okay. All right. So maybe it's nothing. Sometimes it's my prejudice. Sometimes it's not. You know, I also think of all this earth because we just had the full moon lot. Well, at the moment, the moon is full in Capricorn. So we have a full moon. So if you think about six months ago to the Capricorn new moon. What were you thinking? Did you, did you set an intention six months ago? For the life of me, I can't do the math. It would be like uh, January or February or in seven. So January, what were you, what were you working on in January? Where it was cold, lots of snow here. Okay, let's ask some specific questions. We have a question of what should cancer release? Ah, the Knight of Pentacles, the slow poke knight, being the good student, the true blue dedicated A plus student has the plan, does it step by step by step. So you're gonna release that. It could very well mean you are the Knight of Pentacles. Take yourself out into the world. Release yourself. But there has been a mountain. Um, there's a mountain here. And you've been walking towards this mountain. And um, there's a... So I wonder if there's a goal that you've been going towards and that the cards are suggesting you shift gears. Well, we will clarify. Okay. What should Cancer embrace? Ah. Nine of Pentacles, more earthy energy, self-sovereignty. So unlike the Maker Queen, who is the Queen of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles, we can see her here with her falcon. Uh, traditionally, the Nine of Pentacles is about being alone. The falcon will have its eyes masked to show that you look inward to your own truth. You don't need from the outside you are self-sufficient. So it, it means self-sovereignty. Um, and it's very beautiful. It's also often about your home. So making a home, embracing a home, being on your own, looking to your inner truth. That's what this is telling you to embrace. Uh, this would say there's something outside of you, an aspiration that you can release. You know, that makes me think of the sacred mountain that I live under here in Flagstaff, Arizona. Okay, what are we revisiting in this time of retrogrades? We have Pluto, Saturn, now Neptune, and soon Vir Virgo, I want to say Virgo, Venus, all in retrograde. So these planets are reviewing past recent events. Um, we're looking at a spark, a desire, a creative idea that you had in recent history. And you're reviewing that. We will clarify what the tarot wants you to know that you're unaware of. This is the same card here, Queen of Pentacles. Do you not know your worth, my friend? You don't, you, the tarot wants you to know Queen of Pentacles. So this can mean a couple of things. I'm liking the Queen of Pentacles. She's a little dramatic here. I love drama queens, so no problem with that. She's been reading a book. She's swooning over reading it. Um, I love that narrative. There's butterflies around her, dandelions. I always think of one of my favorite books, Dandelion Wine, when I use this deck, because there's fields of dandelions. So this is something you don't know. I feel like you don't know your worth, and that this month 
You're supposed to come to understand not only your worth, but that you have everything that you need. And then and then there's a tension between the, the maker queen or the queen of pentacles. She wants a partner. She wants the king of pentacles of, of all the queens and she's the Marian kind, right? So she's here. And then she's here with the nine of pentacles, which is a very different um, energy in that she's single. All right. My dog always wants to drink during readings. So he's bringing a little watery vibe in here now. All right. Now, what is the future for cancer? Oh, good. I say sarcastically, the devil. It is. Do it. Wow. Okay. You got a little devil work to do. It could be your friend Capricorn. That can be. That's their card. Um, but it looks to me like confronting thoughts that defeat you. You need the strength card. Um, that's that Leo energy coming in. In the, you know, in the next month. But um, yeah, confronting the devil, you might be have some addiction, some codependence, self-defeating thoughts. It could also be like great sex um, in the future here. But I think that's what I'm, the feeling I'm getting here. It's uh, this, this feeling. That's that devil feeling, you know. So it's very captivating. And you're gonna have to deal with that in the future underlying this energy hmm. a ten of swords a three of pentacles three of wands and your card upside down so we see the chariot in the bottom of this deck but she is upside down get it I, there's something here that's preventing you from being yourself that we need to look at and there's a tension between um what you've been aspiring to, this mountain, this this perfect, um, being like the good girl, good boy, good, what's it, um, good person. And it doesn't have the same feeling as good girl. So like whatever you, your gender, like a good girl, like she's like the brownie, um, brownie's honor, um, to quote my aunt, who's not a cancer, who's a Scorpio and probably won't see this reading. And as my mom, the Leo, said, and brownies on her too, right? So it's like the goody two-shoes, the Knight of Pentacles can be that way. It can also be so slow because they're so trying to get the perfect plan. Um, and I know, Cancer, that I'm always talking to you about how slow you are and how beautiful it is to watch you very slowly unfold. This is saying, uh, know your power. Be, your, be the sovereign of your life. There's some kind of spark that happened. Boom, that's power. That's willpower. Um, this is what you don't know. Okay, a little drama. A little stucky earth energy. It's like in there's a contrast between this maker queen and the, and the reader, right? And then there's this, like, Singular, the answer nine, like the nine of pentacles. This is you finding contentment in and of yourself. Okay. There's something here about your idea, an idea that you have, the devil. It's an idea and it's it's keeping you from coming in as yourself. And I don't usually look at the upside down cards, but since it was your card, I had to. Um, okay, and we are we're looking at a little bit of pain here. So let me show you that underlying energy. A ten of swords. This is again your ideas. It's a it's a death. It's the end of something. As you can see, there is light coming in, but somebody is on her knees before a skull at a gravesite. Or their knees. Their knees. His, her, their. Um, and there's all of these. This deck so fantastic so it's usually like a body stamp 10 times it's like this is over um this is not that this is if you turn around there's a new day dawning it looks kind of like it suggests a dove hope there's all of this chaotic thought and disturbance um a couple more thoughts yet to try in this battle this is a person who's bargaining um grieving and yeah so this this is here it comes in very strong um here 
Okay, that's an underlying energy. There's also a beautiful working with others. Three of Pentacles, collaboration. Everybody has a piece. There's three of you. You each, you could be more than three, but there's not two. It's not like you and one other. It's not a couple card. This is a group card. It's a collaboration card. Everybody has something valuable to bring to that collaboration, a piece of the whole. There's a feeling because this person in the Ten of Swords is looking at that. It's a feeling that everyone's trying to offer them a piece, but none of them can offer them the whole. And then we have a journey. That's an unusual Three of Wands. Usually the Three of Wands, someone is waiting for their ship to come in. This Three of Wands is on a boat going towards their, whatever they have manifested. It's unknown. It's a dark night. There's that full moon. Perhaps you are just now setting out on a journey, Cancer. You're going towards what you manifested. What I see is you're leaving. You're leaving. Um, people have tried to offer you something in your grief. Um, your grief has brought you to your knees because I see two swords still in your basket. It's a strange ten of swords. It feels more like an eight of swords. You're not done. You may never be done. And so you go on this dark journey. It looks like a moon journey. You're going to confront your defeating thoughts. That's what we see here. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to use the dark tarot to clarify this because that seems appropriate. We're going on a dark journey. Let's see. A slightly harder deck it doesn't actually clarify very clearly but interesting cards they tell me this deck said let's talk to cancer you want to talk to cancer <laughs> okay do your cards talk to you my friends mine talk to me so you are releasing the slow poke night Slow poke night. The one with the plan. Letting them go. Is it you? Is it you going out? An Ace of Cups. We saw this when those cards popped out. Ace of Cups. A new emotional beginning. Divine love. This looks very magical. There is a cauldron. Very Amazon image, right? Because Amazons traditionally have one breast. Removed so then in art when you see the other breast covered, it suggests like this is a heroic adventure. Again, it's that nine of pentacles energy. Um, I feel like this is somebody peering to you from the darkness um, too, because there's like you can see dragon eyes peering over her shoulder. What are those nostrils? It's like air coming out of the nostrils. What else? Okay, so Ace of Cups, this is your release. The Nine of Cups. You already have the Nine of Cups on the table. That is the Dancer Nine that we saw here. Wish fulfillment and contentment in and of yourself. And... The Knave of Pentacles. This is not the Knight, but the Page of Pentacles. Really grounded, young energy. Earthy. Although this one is, you know, she's walking around with a bunch of uh, skeletons, carrying swords. You know, she's definitely not naive of death, violence, darkness. Fire. That's funny that all that fire it sort of speaks of wands. That's why this deck is a little hard to read because the imagery is is um, fantasy. <clears throat> In some way, like this is telling me that because you know, everybody, because you see that the Knight of Pentacles, this good knight who's got this steady plan. Boom, 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 go to the mountain. Um, being told to give this, this journey up 
or this this person to let this go release this this tendency of yours either release it into the world proceed with this plan i feel like it's actually saying not to be so um methodical about doing everything perfectly so it's like releasing perfectionism um, and you know that, so we have an Ace of Cups and then the Nine of Cups, they make a 10. It's a, it's a completion of an emotional journey. And then we see you as a, as the Knave of Pentacles, young, grounded, practical adventurer going off on a new journey. It's almost like a fool card. So there's been a journey and you are... You finished it. It was an emotional journey. That's why we see you grieving. We see you in the we see you leaving in the nine. I mean, the three of wands. Um, it's almost as if the nine of uh, if cups is here. I mean, not the nine, the eight, which is time to go on an adventure. Okay. So let's see. Nine of Pentacles. This is what you're to embrace. This solitude, home. This table. I clipped my nails. And then I can't pick up the cards. Because I don't like having long meals. It feels impolite. <laughs> okay. So the Nine of Pentacles. What else? Six of Pentacles. Charity. Generosity. That's beautiful. That beautiful embrace. Like... That's so loving cancer energy right there. There's your six of pentacles. Aw, hugging. It's like a dark angel being hugged by a light angel. That's beautiful. Wow. I don't usually like the six of pentacles because it, it's about generosity, charitable giving. Some have, some don't. If you have charity, it's because people have too much money and then they make the people that need money um, have to be thank you thank you for the charity instead of dude we should all have enough right um, but this one is a beautiful nurturing generosity it's giving somebody that needs a hug a hug comfort then we have the king of cups scorpio energy the kings in this deck always have a monster hugging a woman they're always rad women but I, I'm always like why are they like that um, someday I'm gonna understand that I feel like I'm on the verge of understanding that so the king of cups is a person who they're emotionally intelligent but they're very private you know Scorpios were we I'm a Scorpio are thought of as secretive mysterious um, and, and so that's very much the king of cups energy but the king of cups is quiet about their emotions, not as a power play, but because your emotions matter so much. So there's a huge amount here of this Cancerian emotional generosity of being there for other people's feelings. And you're able to do this because you're in a nine of pentacles. Your house and home are beautiful and safe. You're the provider. You're the sovereign of your own life. You take your own counsel. You actually don't need to talk about your feelings because you, you're standing with yourself. Okay, so I'm, you're embracing this. It's on the bottom since I look. Oh, there's our Knight of Pentacles on the bottom. All right, one other thing. Ooh, the Hierophant. Str tradition, history, structural power. You can see the books representing recorded history, the dragon. Um... It's very much about a mentor here. It's about reading with a monster. Um, you're reading books with a monster, right? So this monster, the one that's holding the woman in this King of Cups, right? So I, I said that. There's this cross. There's a, there's a difference between you and this other. That you're... That there's somebody comforting somebody else. There's There's a lot of exchange here and now i see it with the nine of pentacles so this bird is not blindfolded 
this bird and this woman are in a conversation. It's, it's like a cross species conversation here. Um, and then the Hierophant, which is, I used to dislike the Hierophant because it's like the Pope, it's church, state, but it's also history. Um, and I'm a historian, right? So I can clear that up. Um, I can reclaim the Hierophant. Um, and so that, that kind of fiery fire of the past, like we can see how with the dragon speaks, the flames are coming out. There's a little bit of a, um, I don't know, there's a little hierarchy in this because we can see the kind of mansplainy dragon and then the red haired woman looking up and listening to the brilliant dragon. But sometimes it's nice to have a teacher um, or a conversation. Um, like if you have a, a therapist, a mentor, a sponsor, that's that kind of energy um, that you're supposed to embrace. But there's um, definitely, interestingly, you and your solitary, self-sufficient, self-sovereignty, you're in a conversation across a difference with a monster. Who is this monster that you converse with? It could be a concept. I feel like it's a person that represents this concept. Yeah, and, and, and it's, um, it's a kind of thing that other people are afraid of. They see a monster, they, they see death, and you see an ally. And you're able to converse with this in a way that others can't, to embrace this in a way that others can't. And that's what the cards say, keep doing that. You're good at that. This is a part of your, your page of pentacles, grounded, new adventure that you're setting off on. So recently, we're reviewing this with all the retrogrades, there was an Ace of Wands. What is this new inspiration? This desire? What's, what are we reviewing here, Cancer? A Two of Swords, a dilemma between two ideas. Swords are your ideas, it's your mind. So there's a a choice, right? And and um, it's hard to choose between these two truths. They seem to be in conflict. What else? The Knave of Wands, the card of the queer, our page of wands, the outsider perspective, the foreigner. I say queer because the, um, the Knave of Wands often represented as dressed in foreign attire represents travel, messages from afar. And the queer is outside, an outsider, and sees um, the world from the outside and brings a message from that. That's This Ace of Wands is coming from the outside, the place of the outside. You could be this page of wands. And thirdly, temperance. Beautiful, divine. This is a stop. This card stalls you. It's water. You're in your element. You're feeling your feelings. You, Cancer, don't mind being stalled. <laughs> Temperance. Very much a portal into the water. It's like such a different place from all the other cards in this dark tarot. It's like in the green mountains at the side of a creek. And you alchemized here. So this is what you recently did. You had a dilemma. What was your dilemma? Uh, there, was, there was a fire of the Ace of Wands, the Page of Wands. We want to go. We see it. We don't have to see it that clearly. We can see it's not right, right? And then Temperance says, whoa, slow. Let's... Feel this through. That's You like that, don't you, Cancer? You like to take your time feeling it through. You trust your feelings. I think Cancers trust their feelings more than I, a Scorpio, do. Um, I go up in my head. I use my body. Um, Pluto and Mars, those are my ruling planets. Are you ruled by the moon or Venus? Some feminine, watery energy. So you don't mind... That being in this slow poke knight of pentacles energy. So this is recently, it looks like 
you might have felt a lot of that cardinal spark beginning energy, but then there was a slowdown. And so you had, you felt that tension. That's what the Two of Swords is about. All right, the Queen of Pentacles. She knows her worth. She's a bit dramatic. What is she here? She, she You don't know about her. She's your overarching energy. Let's find out. What does the tarot want you to know? Tara wants you to know. Oh, there's that Ten of Swords again. Something is over. Ten of Swords. That's this. Remember? We've talked quite a bit about that. Let me look at this image here. Um, oh, yeah. That's dead. She stabbed it. This angel came and she killed this beast. Remember we saw you talking with a monster understanding a monster here she has beheaded and put that monster out out of its misery i wanted to say um she used a sword the sword represents truth it's your concepts your paradigms your ideas this card always speaks to me of like the end of a paradigm you know the queen of pentacles represents an old paradigm the paradigm like of traditional family values we see that here too um, there's something here with the Hierophant, make your 10, Queen of Pentacles twice. Um, it's a, it's a paradigm possibly that is over and it's a truth that is passing away because the, the Knave Page of Wands came in. Page of Wands is the critic of the tradition, right? So what else do we have here? Four of Pentacles. We saw this. This is control. This is... In the pentacles, and you don't make very much money. You don't make very much pra in the practical realm. Your security is like on the edge. You maybe live paycheck to paycheck. And so what happens is you get controlling. Or somebody does. This, I don't know. Let me see. One more card. What is this about? Now the eight of wands. Oh, I love this. The werewolf. So the Eight of Wands, communication, action. We literally see a transmutation from the fair maiden into the very powerful werewolf. In the Celtic traditions, werewolves were not scary monsters. And, the, and there's a lot of here about what's scary to others, right? Here we have a wolf-woman hybrid. Um, yeah, like a beast that you commune with, that is a part of you. And it's very much in opposition to your old way of being. Um, the Queen of Pentacles going like this. Like there is, um, have you been doing that? What it says is you're more powerful than you realize. You're a werewolf for crying out loud. And werewolves, were heroic. They protected the fields from outside forces um, the way that the natural world could encroach on farmland. It, they they would police the hedges. Um, and the hedges are like the borders of, of land. And I, I struggle with this because I'm a person who embraces the wild. And for me, the werewolf represents wildness. And so I must admit i eat from farmers the product the produce of farmers figures largely in my diet as does meat i mean i eat it all right so i i have ambivalence about the what we protect and the way that we protect it from wilderness um werewolves people that identified as werewolves historically would um when they would get caught tried put to death um, because uh, everybody believed in werewolves back then, they would say, well, we were fighting witches. So again, witches, um, they represent the occult. They represent the natural world, relations with the natural world. So there is something about um, hybrids of wolves and humans, um, people becoming wolves and protecting uh, the borders between human and wilderness. Um, 
with the very wildness and violence that comes from from the wild, from what they they know the wild and they protect against the wild somehow. Well, that was a digression. So the Queen of Pentacles, she's very civilization, security based. We see the Ten of Swords, the death of a paradigm. Some holding on to control, like a little bit of poutiness. I want to say, Cancer, and excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, but this is telling you. But if you've been at all victim-y and a drama queen, um, know you're a werewolf. Know your power. There's a lot here about knowing your worth and knowing your power. The Queen of Pentacles, you want to know that. That's her higher self. Her lower self is dependent, security, needy. Um, so there's something here about the end to um, a concept of, of security, the Ten of pentacles and there's an ideal instead of self-sovereignty of knowing your power so we see you in the future this is why we use the dark tarot the, de the devil right is this a capricorn is it your an addiction is it codependence or some other trauma that you are confronting in the future it may be the very idea that keeps coming up is this ten of swords the very paradigm it's self-defeating you need to be done with it. So let's see. It's future work. So it's a two of cups. This is your concept of love, soulmate connection. It could also be about your concept of justice. What do we have here? Beautiful judgment. Angel of judgment. This is about ascending you have done it right here and now you get to go to the next level of the game of life it's not death although it could be it's definitely portaling into the next experience it's this this beginner feeling of the knave or page of pentacles and the page of wands and the tower <laughs> the tower Something built on a shaky foundation must come down. This is very transformative. Hmm. Well, I would say that it's something around your idea of love. That your idea of love, you need to revolutionize. The tower will help you do that. But before you can move on, you must disabuse yourself of a paradigm of some kind of soulmate deal. It's not built on a, it's built on a shaky foundation. You would be wise to look right where you're avoiding looking at. Look at the foundation. Look at where your vision, your tower is built on. What's it built on? Is it true? Is it solid? Or is it a story that you, you can be done with? This story is undermining your power. It makes you um, seek security. And it's very clear with the Ten of Swords here, in the way that the Ten of Swords is here, first in this in this way. We saw it first this way. Like almost like only ten swords have been used. She's still worshiping at this loss feels trapped. She's not going anywhere from it. And then she's used that sword. She's slain that concept. Right? So that's a part of what you don't know. It's keeping you, it's keeping you in control. What is it? It's an old idea about how things should be. Right? And you're a werewolf. <laughs> you're in denial of your wolf side, maybe. Look into your darkness. This is the message. Look into your darkness. It's there you find what's beautiful and powerful and transformative and healing. And you have a way of engaging with darkness. We see this in, under your embrace with these monsters. And we see it again um, here. The monster is you. And that's why probably why your chariot's not coming in yet. You need to embrace the monster that is you. 
What's on the bottom here? The Empress. That is no doubt. This is the monster that is you. You are the Empress. The most nurturing, loving. She's Earth herself. Very powerful. That's um, the Cancerian people I know. They're very powerful and empressy. Um, very loving, generous, strong people. And it feels like you don't know that. <laughs> and it's going to come down. Notice there's a tower. Looking at this card, you can look at it too. What do you see in this tower? It's quite, it looks like quite a story. Hmm. It has to do with your concept of soulmate connection. Can you see how the how that's coming in here? See the blue? This feels like this is the new light. This is the new place you're going. If there's an angel looking onto this. And then there's a tower. There's the tower. Is this a tower that already happened, or, or is this something that's going to happen? It can be a good surprise. It's transformative. Look at the foundation. I think that's all I have for you, Cancer. I'm, I look forward to doing your cards again next month. Uh, this feels big. I do see this, Two of Swords. There's, there's competing paradigms here. There's lots of help for you to see things in a new way. Uh, you're encouraged to recognize your power. And to recognize what's holding you back is maybe you're not willing to look right there at that shaky truth. Um, it's, it's conventional truth. And you can be liberated from it by really seeing who you are as a cancer. And then you can come in. Then we can have you come in the way we, we want to see you. We want to see you going forward with that cardinal energy of the cancer, the card of chariot, your card. You know, with no reins, gently. Very powerful you, if you can love strong enough to get those horses to go with you without reins. She's walking on the ground. This, this person, they, they are walking on the ground. They're not even on a, on a chariot. The chariot is, how is the chariot suggested here? It's just this pink cloud that you're in. That's your shell. You're walking away from something obscured. I feel like you're going to stop going in this direction. But we don't really know where you're going. We know you're going off to compete with it, to fight your devil, say, or confront, deal with your darkness, the monster in you, which you're quite good at conversing with. It's really, really quite a beautiful, loving, Cancerian kind of conversation. All right, my friend, let me know. Have a beautiful day.